You're looking at the most comprehensive demonstration of street and highway lighting ever put together, the crossroads of light. And you have a standing invitation to make use of this unique facility at our plant in Hendersonville, North Carolina. Here you can set up just about any conceivable lighting situation. In one location, you can compare for yourself all basic types of roadway lighting equipment made today. You can compare the effect of lighting on different pavements. You can evaluate various methods of lighting every major street classification. The residential street, the white way, the main business street, the traffic street, and a highway section. You'd have to travel to at least 25 cities to make such a complete comparison as you can make here in less than one third of a mile. But what you want to know is, how can all this help you? Well, on this $125,000 street and highway proving ground, we can duplicate nearly any lighting problem you may have in your community and show you several solutions. Say you are concerned with residential streets like this one, representing a considerable property investment on the part of the people who live here. Pleasant and attractive by day, it becomes a forbidding cavern of darkness at night. We can show you how that street would look with six different lighting systems. The old-fashioned radial wave units, called tin pie plates by some, but still in use on many of our streets. The newer, shielded open units improve control over the light so that it goes on the street, not in the bedroom window. Better yet, modern and closed filament luminaires with refractors direct the light precisely in definite beam patterns, resulting in more uniform pavement brightness. Fluorescent units lend distinction and produce less glare, which means more comfortable seeing. Larger fluorescents give higher light levels, permit longer spacing. And even mercury luminaires, sometimes thought of only for highways or wider streets, are available for residential street lighting. We can show you a practical comparison like this for every one of the five major roadway classifications. We would also show you a pointed demonstration of the effect of light spacing. Here you're looking at fluorescence spaced at 150 feet staggered, such as might be applied on two-lane highways. 100 foot one side, typical of service roads and ramps. 75 foot opposite, an arrangement used on principal business streets to give prestige, attract more shoppers and 100 foot staggered recommended for six lane expressways. Another important comparison you can make is the different types of poles and mounting brackets. Steel, concrete, wood, and aluminum. Like most of our visitors, you would probably want to discuss in some detail the three major types of luminaires. Mercury vapor, fluorescent, and filament. Nearly everyone concerned with street and highway lighting is familiar with the general characteristics of each. The mercury luminaire is small, which makes for easier installation. It offers high efficiency. And maintenance is low due to long lamp life and luminaire design. The fluorescent luminaire is characterized by a cool white light soft and diffused with low brightness or comfortable seeing. Fluorescents have a distinctive appearance that adds prestige to any street or highway, and they too offer high efficiency. Incidentally, recent development of the power groove lamp by General Electric has made possible light output more than 60% higher than that of conventional high output lamps. The filament luminaire has a low first cost, and requires no auxiliary equipment such as ballasts. Now in this question of which type luminaire to use, we acknowledge freely that there is no better or best. 
The proper type for you is the one suited to your specific requirements. That's why we'd like you to see this unique demonstration in which all relevant factors, time of day, type of pavement, weather, luminaire spacing, and so on, are constant, and only the type of light varies. A better comparison can be made if the pavement is wet. The lamps in these mercury luminaires have an output of 20,000 lumens, providing an illumination of 1.5 foot candles. Because the source is concentrated, precise control is possible, giving a high percentage of light on the roadway. Fluorescence, 23,000 lumens, 0.75 foot candles. Although fully as efficient as the mercury, the fluorescent does not concentrate as many foot candles on the pavement proper. The elongated fluorescent lamps produce wide patterns of light, which eliminate a lighted tunnel effect and give excellent visibility with almost no glare. Filament luminaires, 15,000 lumens, 1.25 foot candles. They offer a high degree of light control, making possible uniform pavement brightness. We cannot hope to cover here in a few minutes all the ramifications involved in selecting lighting equipment. And film, sensitive as it is, does not show the subtle differences apparent to the human eye. So we hope you'll come to the crossroads of light in person. Then we can set up just about any lighting situation you specify and give you answers you can evaluate with your own eyes. Safety is a word you'll hear repeatedly around the crossroads of light. We believe that proper lighting especially in the areas of driver decision, could save nearly half of the 22,000 lives sacrificed annually in night accidents. Show you what we mean. Take a 40 mile an hour traffic zone, add some pedestrians in a hurry to cross the roadway, put in a truck to screen them. Now, the American Automobile Association says the minimum stopping distance for a car going at 40 miles per hour is 125 feet, right about there. From the driver's seat, the pedestrians are easy enough to see during the day. Time to make the right decision and take appropriate action. But at night, the picture is different. With headlights on low beams for passing, you can barely make out those people at 125 feet. Just a fraction of a second lost in indecision can mean tragedy. If they wore light-colored clothing, as recommended by the National Safety Council, you could see them better. Human nature being what it is, though, most of them won't. You can't legislate clothing. Beyond bare minimums, that is. But you can legislate proper lighting. Lighting that removes the mask of darkness from the driver's eyes, thereby establishing the control of human judgment over the laws of chance. Darkness is the enemy of safe night driving, but it can sometimes be safer than light when that light happens to be glaring at you from oncoming headlamps. One car coming toward you is not too hard to take if he'll switch to low beams. You can look to the side and avoid direct glare. In heavily traveled stretches, though, glare is everywhere, blinding the driver's vision, impairing his judgment, and at very least causing severe eye fatigue. No, we're certainly not advocating doing away with headlamps. We merely want to show that for safety's sake, continuous fixed lighting is necessary in heavily traveled stretches to provide uniform pavement brightness and soften the extreme contrast produced by headlamps coming out of a dark background. Any extreme contrast between dark and light represents a hazard. Our tests here at the crossroads of light show that the eye needs a minimum of seven seconds to adjust from lighted to unlighted areas. Sudden transitions exact a heavy toll in driving efficiency. For example, at a highway interchange area, lighting just to the edge of the interchange does not completely eliminate a hazardous condition. You have to light the stretch beyond in order to give the eye the necessary time for adjustment. The point we want to register is, light of itself does not necessarily make for safer driving conditions. 
A highway lighting system has to be planned conscientiously to meet exactly the requirements of the application. This calls for expert knowledge, facilities, proven equipment, expensive, Proper lighting averages only 2% of the total cost of constructing a highway. What kind of a price tag do you put on 10,000 lives a year? As you approach our new plant in Hendersonville, North Carolina, you'll see a familiar slogan at the main entrance. And we'll soon show you inside examples of how we back it up. For instance, this advanced test sphere is used to measure precisely the light output of various lamp designs. In another test facility, total output of lamp and luminaire together is measured on one of our newest tools for progress, an automatic distribution photometer. The photometer is programmed to measure luminaire output at 600 different angles. Measurements go from the readout device to the master control programmer. This unit, in turn, feeds the figures into an IBM machine, which digests them and furnishes, on a single punched card, all the information needed for calculating distribution of light on the roadway. But, because we believe the best way to evaluate lighting is not only by calculation, but by actually seeing it under use conditions, inevitably we'll end up out at the crossroads. This is our proving ground for working out solutions to lighting problems, for learning more about the human factors involved in night driving, for reappraising our ideas about existing methods, for experimenting with new methods, like this parallel to the roadway installation, and tea lighting. This is the crossroads of light. It exists for you to help you get the safest, most efficient, most reliable lighting systems available. We hope we can turn on the lights for you in person soon. <laughs>